much and uh, maybe we can have a discussion. <laughs> so the topic is the rise and fall of open source gaming projects. And um, we take as example the project we work on, Battle for Westnot. Who has not heard from Westnot yet? Okay, quite a few. Okay, you hear we have sound, but no picture. <laughs> okay, Battle for Westnot is a turn-based strategy game. That means you can move all your units in one turn and then press the end turn button. Then the AI computes or your opponents, your human opponents. Uh, you have a hex field based game map because hex fields um, allow a better uh, movement scheme. For example, if you have squares, the diagonals are more larger away than the verticals or the horizontals. Do we have a picture? Ah, right. Ah. Uh, Why? <laughs> Do Every one of you knows German, right? <laughs> Is there really someone not knowing German in here? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> you're joking. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, uh, can you start the old version, please? I can. <laughs> I can. Let's start the old one. Maybe this is English. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> ah, but, okay. but I can switch. What? One moment, please. Can you... <laughs> Spanish? <laughs> what do you want? Can you scroll through the list of supported languages? I want to do this later on in my talk. Oh, really? We can't do this during your talk. Yeah, okay. So you see, it's a lot of stuff. We're perfectly organized. <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> okay. Well... Stop! Hurry, you're too fast! Okay. <laughs> Talk faster! <laughs> okay. Well, the, um, Niels will demonstrate a little bit of the gameplay, I hope. I'll try to. Um, the game is following the KISS principle. KISS means keep it simple and stupid. That basically means you remove everything um, from the user interface or from the game mechan mechanics until you have reached a level um, where it barely works, yeah? Nothing left to remove. So, you can just click on units and move them. Or, we attack other units. It's nothing more, right? Did I miss anything? Recruit. Yeah, okay. You can you can call <laughs> for new units if the one you have don't are, are not enough. Now I'm lazy. Yeah, he <laughs> just rolled it to the side. Okay, Westnot is a major project, mature project. Um, we have reached 10 years last year. And sadly, during the last two ones, user counts or uh, forum visitors are stagnating. So we are not growing anymore. The question is why? That's difficult to answer. Um, maybe <coughs> it's because we fail to deliver with new content. Content? Now we are full, cool. sorry. Content is the most important stuff for open source games. Many open source projects, gaming related ones, have problems with content. You have a good engine, you have a stable idea of the game mechanics, but only a campaign with three scenarios, if, if it is campaign based. And um, that's half of an hour gameplay, and then it's finished. Um, can, can you leave the scenario, please? I just want to attack. Yeah, okay, <laughs> let's attack a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, mach Kampagne, genau. 
Okay, so, um, Westward is different. We have a lot of campaigns. Uh, 17 or 18? Haven't counted mm, them? Many. Many. Okay. <laughs> Most of them are larger than 10 scenarios. So you can play at least two weeks around the clock if you are fast and good. Um, that's much more than commercial, many commercial games offer. For example, um, The Last Starcraft comes with one campaign, uh, 24 scenarios, if I remember correctly. Um, that took me two days to finish on, on the easiest um, difficult level. And the second, that was too easy for me. The next difficult level was too hard for me. So, <laughs> wasn't exactly... Uh, the right audience for the game. Okay. We are not able to include any more campaigns into our game because we lost our pros manager and that's really a problem. We need a certain quality of mm. artwork, pros, uh, story, whatever, and it's hard to reach anymore. Uh, without the old stuff and st stuff changes over time because people lost interest or are not at university anymore, don't have time or just die. We're not sure the last one really happened but it can. Yeah, maybe one of our developers died and we didn't notice. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> no chance to tell us. Is that in real life or in the game? Hmm? Um, if they died in real life, how would we know? <laughs> they would just drop off inactive. <laughs> Not react to our mails anymore and basically the same which happens if you're really busy from um, real life work. Yeah, sometimes people just quit without noticing or, or, or answering any more to emails or however you try to contact them. Yeah, reasons are unknown, but uh, yeah, you know for yourself. I bet you have quitted something and uh, just broke up the every contact at, le at least once in your life. No? <laughs> <laughs> but let's change the topic. <laughs> okay. Well, all but one of uh, all the campaigns we have is um, are collected from our add-on server. So they are in fact made by users um, which got hooked to the game and um, produced one or more campaigns. We took them, if they are fine, polished them and include them in the game, which isn't uh, possible right now anymore. So <coughs> the new version of Westnot shows some improvement, but we can't deliver um, with the most important stuff, new content. Uh, that's mostly true for uh, older players or um, long-time players, long-term players. New players, of course, have uh, still plenty of content to choose from. Still, you need to um, keep your user base happy. Long-term users tend to produce more content. So you do not want to lose them at all. Yeah, please ask. Uh, please make sure to speak up. We try to record it and otherwise it's not audible. <coughs> a game developer I knew uh, was making a game and he said he doesn't have time for content, he's on his own. So what he's, um, or scenarios and stuff. So what he did was uh, auto generate random content. Have you considered that? Ah, uh, this genetic algorithm, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Are infinite and generate their own stuff. But while it can be interesting on, on from the gameplay perspective, there aren't any real story in it, and well, Nate might be able to help with that. Still, in a um, normal game, you want to have some com some campaign with some storyline evolving around some characters, good or evil, and you want to have something going on. For this you need people who are able to create scenarios, so the basic setup of each single scenario, 
then some overarching concept to make it a campaign and who people are also able to code it, so define it and maintain it afterwards. As you can see here in the add-on server, we have lots of content from users because we make it really easy to produce new content and upload it there. We have a real problem converting from this new content uploaded there, um, first finding the high quality content and then getting it into mainline because of the level of maintenance you have to do whenever you change something in mainline you might have to touch this content so eventually you just get too large yeah. um, please open the um, add-on hmm. manager ah, you are already there yeah okay um, langsam. <laughs> okay there's a lot of add-ons on there um, there are over 500 I guess it was 620 something. That's quite a lot, but there's a lot of unfinished or not working or just bad quality or not what the user wants to play. <laughs> <laughs> you as open source developers should be confident seeing those version numbers. <laughs> not. So, um, how do you find quality content or discriminate quality content from non-quality content? The answer is simple, you can't. Mm -hmm. We don't have a rating system. Pardon? We don't have a rating system, we don't have a rating system yes. That's, that's the problem. <laughs> uh, you can um, sort by size, <laughs> which <laughs> might be a, a sign of quality. Pardon? You can use it. Yeah, <laughs> might be a sign of quality because there's much music or much mm -hmm. art in there, but yeah, <laughs> it also might might be just a, a collection of stuff that um, makes no sense at all. <laughs> um, you can also sort by downloads. So if you download the one with the most downloads, it gets more downloads. So it's a <laughs> self-empowering system and mostly the most downloads are just things with fancy names or which one, the ones that got first <laughs> on the add-on server whenever we uh, open a new one for a new release. A rating system would be a solution. Who, who said it? Yeah. Do you have any experience with rating systems or do you are you a game developer? Uh, I'm not a game developer myself, but I, I, it's kind of looking uh, at proprietary games that have equivalent systems, like Little Big Planet, for example. Uh, please talk louder. Uh, sorry, Little Big Planet is an example where there's a Little Big Planet? Of, um, mm -hmm. community, uh, yeah, community content. A hell of a lot of it is utter crap. Um, but the, the rating system allows you to say, well, this one has got you know, something halfway decent in it, I'll give it a go. It's not that easy to establish a rating system, but mostly our concerns are that it leads to, um, yeah, that competition might spoil our fr friendly community. Yeah, that's. Um, the reason and um, I think we we will need to get to a rating system sooner or later yeah just to to make sure that the add-on um, server is still usable or usable again um, but um, yeah old habits and old rules are changing slowly in large open source projects especially if you don't have a dictator yeah so I like to advise you, keep your dictator happy so <laughs> that he never leaves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our dictator left and um, <clears throat> we can't find a new one or can't agree on a new one or can't agree that we need a dictator and <laughs> uh, all that stuff. Um, I guess a basic problem you often face when implementing a rating system, if you upload finished content, it's good. But if you upload iteratively, like open source work usually is done, you upload an early version, someone downloads it, 
sees uh, doesn't work bad rating next one downloads it doesn't work bad rating then you had some votes you have a very low rating you upload a new version what do you do do you discard all the old comments or do you keep them without your real chance for improving you can actually do like a combination of both as soon as there's a new version you can let the old rating lose some of its value hmm. so, and you can also have like time related values to the rating so if the rating was made hmm. A year ago, it might not be as valuable anymore, and that will adjust quite, quite nicely. The problem is we have not uh, tried out. We are still in the face of um, fighting against each other. If we really <laughs> want a rating system, yeah. Good <laughs> one. And what about maybe uh, splitting the channel of uh, of uh, additional content in two? So you have one uh, group of content that you you know, like from the core developers, that uh, they are trusted, that yeah, they are accepted. Mm. Uh, so they are tested, you know, they are actually good and quite proper. And then you have a, a, a another uh, like group of uh, of uh, additional content that it's just uh, anybody can upload. And like like I, I guess that, like how it's mm. now. Yes, yes, I promised that, and it ended in a flame war, <laughs> of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's, it's a good idea. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> Uh, uh, maybe another idea would be to, to rate by some activity, so the, the most active as it adults will be, will be a little Yeah, bigger. but what is active? Well, co number of commits maybe, or what, when was the light latest update to the... Yeah. the uh, you get someone who uploads it every day. Yeah, okay. we have yeah, one. No, no, already no, have I think it's perfect. Yeah. To script to download for some add on 1000 times so you get more downloads on the, on the list. Yeah. <laughs> we have at least one active abuser <laughs> of, of the download yeah, count. You can get in every system, basically. We are humans, we are more clever than the system. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> you are a human that will pick those to uh, Yeah? Uh, actually, I think uh, what you're facing is that uh, the open source technology doesn't necessarily fit into game development uh, in general. Uh, do you think so, really? Yeah, I'm not saying that we do not fit to talk about it, but <laughs> that uh, it's not uh, the match made in heaven. The thing is that uh, when uh, creating a game, you first of all need a vision, which is usually one person or a small group of people. Then you need, uh, you need to provide the content of the game itself to the end user. And users rarely want to see an iterative process. They want to fin find a finished product. With open source in general, you create apps, it's a bit different. You expect uh, a system to rise uh, over time. Mm -hmm. When a gamer is a game, he wants to play, he wants to finish product. Yeah, indeed. However, uh, recently, uh, games like Minecraft, DayZ, and so on, have managed to like link sort of this iterative mm -hmm. process with, with finished development. And what I could, my suggestion would be to actually sort of split the game. I mean, have a beta branch and say, to, uh, tell the people, listen, this is beta, so we. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, of course. Stuff. We have a we have a beta branch, of course. Yeah, yeah but course uh, have. also with beta, uh, you could try out the rating system. You could try other stuff, which there's not a exactly consensus on. Yeah. yeah. But then that could be much more dynamic. We have the, the we have development branch, and you get a stable branch every one or two years. But the problem with the development branch is that you can do lots of crazy stuff on it, and the users won't actually complain until it's a stable version. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, uh, that's the thing. It's a, it, uh, it is you have a, a, like a stable branch and a uh, development branch, which is sort of this beta, alpha, whatever. Yeah. From the uh, from it, and nobody plays it. Yeah, but my, my point is that this, this is uh, a beta from the perspective of the, the developer. It's not a beta from the perspective of the user. So he thinks, okay, this is not stable. I'm not touching that. And if you would have sort of a semi-stable build that. Uh, is stable as an executable that has content which might uh, or features that might vary. That would be a different story. People would like. To, uh, I think um, the I've seen would like to actually check it out. It's sadly not. We have a very strong multiplayer community, and we make sure that our stable releases are compatible with each other. So one stable series, every minor bug fix release would stay compatible with the other, while in the development release, because we are doing some crazy stuff sometimes, they are incompatible. So the players just see, okay, when I go to the multiplayer server, how many people will I find there for finding other players? Now, uh, of course I want to continue. As you can see here, 160. 
uh, in other games. Players right now on a Saturday afternoon. And there are even 32, okay, 31 guys hanging around just in the lobby waiting to start games or stuff like this. Whatever, talk, just talking. So, the matter is now, if you come on the development server and only see two guys around, and that's if you're lucky, if you're lucky <laughs> those guys who want to play multiplayer will not be there. And if you have no one there, the wishes circle starts. You can't promote this version. I think he was first. Louder, much louder, please. Good example for what that person was saying is Dota 2. They have two versions of the game, the beta and the stage. But it's not the development of that. It's a game where they first put new characters, for example. And the game itself doesn't break. It works, but uh, it may break the game mechanics a little bit. So the uh, new hero can be overpowered or something like that. And only after that, that character uh, makes his way to the main, the stable version. And the other thing I would like to say is uh, to use some kind of statistics of people uh, using those modes, those campaigns. And uh, not use the rating system, but anonymous statistics. Uh, if a person downloads a new mode and he spends a lot of time in it, and another person does the same in a yeah, late time, I mean, we, a couple of days. We don't watch our single players. Maybe that um, we had a system once upon the time to gather statistics like this. The idea was great. Nobody turned it on? And um, no, it on. many had it on. We had lots of data, yeah, but nobody really made use of the data because it was just too much information to go through. Yeah, data mining is not an easy task. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you want to, uh, to make the rate as high, then maybe you should uh, you know, data mining and use that data. Because statistics it helps in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. the idea is good. We have, uh, I work on a game called Bitfire, which is a, has a similar idea. We get tons and tons of user content, mm -hmm. and we've done a couple different things to encourage that. Uh, we used to, we've just instituted a rating system. I can't tell you whether how well it works or not, but we made it very easy when you're rating a level. You press the key while you're, while you're playing, mm -hmm. and the rating gets sent to the central database, so there's no friction to, to rating things. But, uh, we used to have a similar, used to have people would post their levels in the forums and people could vote on them there. We had a you know, one through five stars and that tended to work pretty well. And the other thing we've done that has worked really well is we have uh, level design contests once every maybe uh, six months or three mm -hmm. times a year. And people will uh, submit levels, people will vote on them. And we've gotten some, some really fantastic levels. And I found that the, the sense that you were saying people will get upset by the competition. I, I find the competition actually encourages people to to push themselves to the next level. They look at what yeah. this other guy did and they say, well, I'm going to do better than that next time because I want to win the competition. Mm -hmm. And that's been a, a real, both a positive thing for the community because it gets people involved and it also generates a ton of a really high level of content. There, there is good or, or positive competition and you have negative competition and you, you need to encourage the positive <coughs> one and disencourage negative. Oh, you are all lazy. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> pardon, pardon, please again and louder. When was it that you were collecting all this data and you didn't have the analysis for it? Because I'm thinking that five years ago people weren't interested in big data back then, but now mm -hmm. a lot of people are. And that would be a way to attract more people to the project. Well, I looked at our statistics three years ago, regularly. Let me check if I can still find it, but I think it's gone. But it, um, it wasn't easy to, to say why, why did people quit at Scenario 5 just from the statistic? Mm. Or no longer there. Why uh, do they lose well. their gold in this scenario? It, it was difficult for me, but yeah, <coughs> I, I just used it for developing the campaign. Maybe it can be used 
for uh, yeah, rating add-ons better than for development, we need to try out. Yeah, of course, course you need to try. Yeah, we will do so. Next next year, I, I will tell you. It. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question for you right now regarding what kind of recognition is given to uh, content creators, especially the good ones, and a forum title. Yeah. Um, our con our, our content creators, Sorry. the main exchange platform is our forum. In the forum, we have some titles. Of course, every developer gets a title, translators get a title, artists get a title, and those who are known to create good content get a title, and those who are known to create innovative content get a different title yet again. So we use the system, especially since the forums are the main place to complain about content, which doesn't work. Yeah, and the, the, the most the belohnung? Reward. Reward is, uh, yeah, positive mm. comments in the forum. And, yeah, it's uh, not very much. And maybe a high download rate. But, yeah, you can abuse the download counter, like, like, it is, uh, like I com explained before. And, um, yeah, this made not only one um, UMC user-made content designer mad <laughs> and uh, going to rage. Yeah. Mm. Designers need more reward. Uh, that's definitely the case. Mm -hmm. So I want to come back to the point uh, where you earlier said on that you need to basically forward port uh, add-ons to new Westnoff versions. Is that so? Mm, yes, yes, yeah, that's yes. I think yes. that is a very great showstopper for players. Because players? For the users. They want to try out perhaps very old add-ons that haven't been reviewed in any way. So if you compare it with other games, for example, the very obvious Doom, you can still play maps made in 1994, because all the versions are supported throughout, and there's no forward porting needed. Um, still grab was not 1.6 or 1.2. Um, what we do have is, we do have different add-on servers for different versions. So we have one add-on server for the old 1.6 series. We have an add-on server for the 1.8 series. We have a different one for the 1.10 series. We don't have the but the one quick one. Not anymore? OK, it's more than six years ago, so. Yeah, so but it's more like if you take uh, the client from Trunk right now. Mm -hmm. Can you no. say with confidence that you can run no. almost all? No. All, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's a problem. We have scripts for updating stuff. They don't catch everything. But we, there, there are people on the forums who grab old content and port it and then throw it on the new server and throw it into version control at the same time. Okay. The matter is, if we kept the backwards compatibility all the time, we would just shoot ourselves on the leg. Hasn't been a problem for other games. Well, it depends on how well defined your engine is, and basically what we are developing these days is the engine. And since the engine is all changing all the time, and we don't have a one single fixed format of how everything should be, it's not this easy. Especially since we also say that our core content, which can also change, is in a stable release, the stable API, so to say. Core content there also being the units with the unit images. So if, we, if you reference one of those from the core group, it's perfectly working in this release, in this stable series, for example. But we do not guarantee that we don't, for example, change the animation of a unit, meaning that the frame you will then see, if you are looking at frame 5, is not a completely different one. So in theory, the content might load, but it might not look like the designer intended it to. Or work like intended. talking about uh, programming method data mining and stuff like that. Not that I blame you because this is game developer uh, <laughs> You mustn't forget about uh, the actual players. There are plenty of players who actually can't contribute any graphical aspects nor any code, but are maybe willing to re-rate uh, the, the add-ons for you. Like they can uh, have a pre-selection of possible interesting add-ons for you. You can actually get uh, 
five players, trusted players to test those versions or, or something like that. Players want to review stuff. We are just denying it for that old rule that we don't want to encourage competition, yeah? But it must be players who don't contribute themselves and all data they provide you must be, be uh, anonymous actually towards the community. Mm -hmm. You don't want to produce competition in the game. <laughs> You're talking about not having competition. You don't um, have competition. But competition is... It's, there's healthy competition. Uh, healthy competition. Yeah, indeed, there's healthy competition. Yeah. Yeah. So, the main point which we see as unhealthy competition often are leaderboards. Because leaderboards often lead to flame wars and stuff like this. So, that's why we say we do often. That's why we say in our multiplayer community we do not support an official ranking list or something like this. If you do want to do some ranking, you can do so. But we will not officially support it within the game itself. Yeah, there are ladder gamers who um, yeah, ha have some chess-like, it's, it's called Elo. ELO, yeah, ELO rating thing. Uh, but we, um, we don't give them any support and point with fingers on them because they do this. It, it's, it's a shame. We don't do this, we just ignore it. <laughs> no, there, there are in fact people, well, okay, yeah. <coughs> but there is a huge difference between ranking players and ranking content. So there's different kind of competition. I mean, that's not really competition. <laughs> it's just telling the new players, here's something good for you to play. And if you want retention, you kind of need to give them what they need to stay. Yeah. So it's not about players competing against players. Yeah, um, the idea is that um, content creators don't help each other anymore if there is too much competition. But I, I don't share that idea. I, I completely agree that um, there's healthy and unhealthy competition. But um, um, a large project takes a lot of time to change old rules. Yeah? And it's an ancient rule that we don't like to encourage competition. <laughs> and, and we lack the dictator that says, okay, we do it because we need to do it. Yeah? Da war noch eine Frage. Who wanted hmm. to say? Um, you were worried about the stagnation of the uh, user base of your game. Again, you must be much, much, much more louder. Uh, you were worried about the stagnation of the user base of your game. Yeah. If I'm correct, you, so you said that. Uh, your game is more than 10 years old. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so, the game, uh, games is an ent entertainment, and people, they tend to uh, like new ways of entertainment. And, um, of course, uh, you can uh, provide new entertainment by providing new content. Uh, it's like a TV series. The first season uh, it gains some uh, people who watch it. The second season, Whoa, it's a big uh, explosion. Uh, everybody speaks that it's a great TV series. The third season is okay. The fourth one is, well, I don't think you should see. And, and so on. Uh, so everything has a, uh, a way up and uh, then stagnating and the way down. Even if we take some uh, great strategies like Warcraft 3 or Starcraft uh, or any other games from uh, commercial firms, uh, they didn't last, I think, longer than 10, 15 years, even though they were as uh, cyber discipline or, you know, uh, esports and so on. And the StarCraft is lasted alone, but the main user base was from Korea. <laughs> and, and, and so now it was replaced with the StarCraft 2. And don't you think that maybe it's uh, the time to think about the battle for Web 2 with 3D graphics and so on? Or maybe not just. <laughs> 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 3D graphics are uh, a big issue. <laughs> um, yeah. Did you think about this? Uh, every day um, someone drops into the forum and asks when will Westnet go 3D? 
um, yeah, if you compare our pixel art images to the 80s or the 90s, we are doing quite well, yeah? The absence of pretty graphics is the main problem. No, just many times it's been really hard for the graphics. Yeah. 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 You are right. Um, commercial games want to sell a new game, so you have a part two or part three. We don't need to. Um, release a part two or a part three, we can just um, incrementally add new stuff. Uh, but the problem is everything new is always causing resistance. There's always at least one developer <coughs> who wants to have a word at it, who says, oh no, I can't live with it. Yeah? <coughs> so everything new is always a, a huge fight. So you have too many egos. Yeah, no dictator. That's, um, that's the problem. You all, we're talking about open source projects. Everyone working in open source projects has their own motivation to do so. No matter if it's a game, if it's some office suit, or if it's a web browser, or just some command line application. The matter is, if you have a project which is of some size and some age, you will have several old developers in there, who of course think, hey, I've contributed so much. What I say is the golden rule book. You will always have this. You won't get around it. So it will be difficult for new developers to really get heard and get their new and often great ideas really implemented. That's why Fabi says, you need a dictator. Well, you need, you need, you need some... <laughs> Um, I think what Fabi wants to say is what helps most is to have someone as head of the project who is one strong minded but who can also listen and who doesn't say, okay, we have always done it this way, so we need to continue it this way. It's of course very so comparable to, to the it's development of society. Yeah, yeah, yeah so absolutely. You have been first? Oh. Yeah, I think you have one good thing going, though. You have these plugins that you, people can use for any given game when they start, right? So they can plug in certain functionality or not, based on what they choose to do, yes? Mm. I'm not sure what you mean. Yeah, the modifications. The modifications, yeah. Yeah, no, we have add-ons and the new features modifications where you can, that can change existing other content. But most add-ons are just content. Oh, it's just content, not functionality. Because uh -huh, it sounded like you can plug different kinds of behaviors. So if people like certain kinds of um, functionality within the game, <coughs> you can choose to start one game with or without that functionality. And then some of that stuff is possible. Some content creators, as I said, are very innovative in what they are doing. Um, who was it who made him? Was not basically a movie player. Do you remember? No. Ethereum. Ethereum. Yeah. So, you saw the game. He basically used the system to create a movie player with it. The main problem was syncing the audio. <laughs> like always. <laughs> <laughs> um, first you, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I would like to say, I'd like to be actually having a new version of Webmon, like Webmon 2 or something. That, uh, as somebody said uh, earlier, uh, games, uh, like players, don't really want the or don't really need uh, iterative development. Like, uh, usually when you play a game, unless it's like a huge online game, uh, that I made for online content. I know it was not that online, but it's only made for uh, specifically online game. I think it, players just get the game, they play, they might stick around for a couple of months because they want to try new version, new uh, plugin, new uh, uh, add ons or something. But at the end, they just say, yeah, I finished the game and that's done. So at the point, I, I, I mean, I know I played was not like six years ago, I finished most of the main campaigns and I said, yeah, it's a really nice game, but I'm done. I, I, have, I have other games that I'm fine. But uh, I think that if you want to uh, also improve the user base and also change the way you steer development, 
you, you might need, you might think, yeah, maybe it's time to get to a new version. Like you take the core developers and uh, whoever wants to keep maintaining the old one, yeah, they can keep doing it, it's open source. But then you take the core developers or people who want to do it and say, yeah, now we're going to make Wesnoth 2 or... Uh, okay, question. Okay. What is the difference between Wesnoth 1 and Wesnoth 2? What is the di what what would be in a theoretical deep, idea? Deep down, what would be the difference? I think deep down the idea is that it's mostly the same game, but at, at, at the end mm -hmm. it's a, a new name, so people are going to say yeah, okay. we're going to get to that hype because yeah, it's a new game, and you, you get to say yeah, for, from now on we are going to discard these old uh, ways of, of doing development and say we are going to start with a new way. So uh, I am the creator, <laughs> for, so somebody can take the lead. Say I am the, the creator, for, and we are going to have these objectives. We're going to uh, abandon uh, like all the code base or try with this new way of uh, having an engine and adding new features to the core engine. I, I, I don't know how it works, but um, or as, and say, yeah, no, no old stuff. And that's basically what we are doing with every new stable release. Y yeah, but it, it, we're just na not naming it Westnoth two, Westnoth three, Westnoth four, it, it's, it's and we are still and we are still keeping the old content there and updating it. The matter is, what commercial games do there is they have old campaigns, they just drop them. They are no longer there, and you get the new release, which doesn't have the old campaigns, but some new ones instead. What we are doing instead is, if we have some new content, for example, we add it in addition to the existing stuff. Yeah, but I, I think the, the problem is, you, you don't want to support old campaigns. I mean, old campaigns are made for the old version, and that's fine. I mean, player can still play that. It's not like it's going to be a worse version because you have a new one. Uh, you, you say, yeah, now I'm going to start with a new version, new new way, new name, and uh, a new content. So you, you can say the best uh, add-ons for the previous version, for the previous game, were these, and this is how it's done, and then the next, the new game is going to be a new game. Uh, but what is the benefit of removing the content? Like, because, because then you, you have a new community, you have a new uh, interest in the game, because it's a new name, it's a, it's a new uh, core team. It's a, you, it's yes, exactly. Yes. People think it's different because they say, "Yeah, I have, I have." Uh, if I say it's well, not uh, one point eight, yeah, it's just uh, some new content, some new patches, but I don't care. I mean, I, 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 I already played well, not one point six or one point seven. Yep. But maybe. if I say it's well, not two, or it's uh, a, a, a totally new name and maybe like a similar game, but a completely new game, then it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's also a uh, new interest for the players. Maybe a, a Westner 2 would not be fantasy themed, but um, steampunk yeah, or. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. problem is just that if you change it this radically, it would mean that you would have to redo all artwork. Yeah, That's not viable. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you want to have a big project, I mean, it's uh, might be necessary, I don't know. I guess we also have the same problem as most open source games probably have. The ratio between coders and artists is heavily focused on coders. That's yeah. true. So we have a, we have a, well, we have a lot I've had a lot of artists, and we currently have still have quite a number of artists. They come, they learn stuff, they leave. But those artists are pixel artists. Yeah, they, they're, they're, they're we don't have. Well, we might have people who have experience with 3D modeling and texturing, but we don't know. Yeah, and I, I, we I, probably I, I'm don't have good ones. I'm not saying doing 3D because I, I, I think modern doesn't really oh. mean 3D or 2D. Oh. And, and well, yeah, and, and, uh, adding a new. <laughs> going in a new direction where you replace all the artwork, well then you need the amount of work that's yeah, been put in this in the past 10 years all over again. Yeah. Uh, I'm continuing the topic, I believe uh, more or less the same is about the marketing involved with like uh, sending mails to the users and telling that's a new version and maybe um, the new version uh, could, uh, should not split too much the, the, the previous one, but uh, it can be like uh, something that affected history, like uh, an invasion in the world from goblins, I don't know, something that makes the, the things different, because we expect what this element that is needed will, will change in the world. And then uh, I believe that's that way, like, uh, it, it doesn't matter if it's 3D or not, because the people that play it, uh, they play it because it's pixel, like, because they have this feeling like uh, they like old school or something like that. But uh, that this interaction with the new element will be the, the, the thing that you bring them to play the new version of the game. Yeah, but um, Westnet is not an online role-playing game like World of Warcraft where you can, yeah, throw in the goblins, yeah? Uh, 
just saying there was a goblin invasion and um, just changing every mainline campaign or, or add-on with that goblin invasion in mind. Nicely. It's difficult. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very difficult. Uh, it's more or less uh, adding a new units and bring campaign with these units uh, with uh, a different line of. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah, we are trying. So the new version features uh, the caliphate, some mixture between Middle East and Japan, hmm. warriors, I think. So, yeah, we try to introduce new, new stuff, but um, StarCraft tries to balance three different factions. And they do reasonably well. Koreans are uh, thinking they do well. <laughs> we we have balanced six or seven. Factions, Something like this. Yeah. And that took us years. At least yeah, f five years or, or maybe we we haven't been finished yet. So introducing a new faction means um, working, iterating over the balancing issue again. We are doing that now for one new faction. Uh, just replacing more than one, or uh, yeah, that's uh, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work. I've thought about a Kickstarter project to collect a lot of money. <laughs> and yeah, money can move <laughs> things. <laughs> um, I think we just do those two questions now. We're basically out of time. So. Uh, 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 I, mean, I, I think you don't really have a choice than going with Battle of West with two or whatever that would be. The thing is, this game has been going on for 10 years. And 10 years of game development is a staggering achievement. <laughs> and there have been in commercial games Neverwinter Nights, Quake. Uh, Starcraft, that's it, without being able to achieve that. And the thing is that at some point you have to cut off the cord and start maybe not talking from you, but think what defines Westnoff and what we can do add new which will make it a different game built up upon the same foundations. Because I'm sure, I haven't seen the source code, but I'm sure that through the 10 years of development it wasn't a single structure which was growing in a specific direction, it was grown organically. And that's how projects work. At some point, you have to look at the structure, take away everything that is not needed, go again to the KISS principle, the absolute minimum, and mm -hmm. build a new game upon that. And the thing is that after 10 years, I don't believe there's a chance to have a spike again. There's only a way downward, unless you create a new project, at least with the same foundation. Mm, that, that might be true, yeah. Ah, more users, more content, more fun, nicer graphics. Just, just, more. <laughs> just more, yeah. Just more and better. <laughs> Basically, replace all those people in the community we don't like with people we like. No, any game, commercial or non-commercial, that has been able to do that. No. <laughs> Someone needs to be first. Da war noch sehr viel